So for about 10 years now, I called my mother every morning. I call her just to check how things go, anything important, anything I need to do. And so as we begin, 1 Thessalonians 3, Paul's in the same situation. I don't live with my mom. I don't live in the same city as my mom, but I want to check on my mom. Well, Paul had the same thing. He wasn't in the same city as the Thessalonians, but he wanted to check on them. You have to refer back to Acts 17. Paul had gone to Thessalonica. He had had converts, both Jews and Gentiles, and then was basically ran out of town. Went to Berea, and in Berea had great success there. The Jews there studied the word and figured out that, yep, what Paul was telling them was right. And so he had many converts and many Gentiles who believed as well. Well, when the unbelieving Jews of Thessalonica found out, they came over and said, no, 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 we got to cause trouble for Paul over here too. So Paul ends up in Athens. And he wonders, how are my new converts in Thessalonica doing? How's things going for them? Now, they didn't have cell phones back then. Matter of fact, they didn't have phones at all. They couldn't pick up the phone and go, hey, how's it going? So he sent Timothy to find out how things were going. And he says he did this for two reasons. First, he did it to encourage them and strengthen them. But then he also wanted them to understand that they didn't want to be unsettled by the trials that were happening to them, the trouble that was happening. He said, we're destined for these. And so I want to apply that to you and me today. We're destined for trouble, but also the people that we invest our lives in are destined for trouble. You know, I invest my life in you. And I invest my life in trying to help you. And we go through the scriptures and we go through verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. And if you've been with me the whole journey, we've gone through 11 books of the New Testament. I just feel it's important to get the whole book in context and to learn a little, a little every day. But I realize I haven't fulfilled this verse. And so I need to ask you today to respond and to, and to participate today. So two questions for you. Because I want to check on you just the same as Paul's checking on his, uh, his new converts. You're not my new convert, but you are people that I have invest my life in. What is it? that troubles you? What is it that keeps you from walking the Christian walk? What is it that you need help with? How could I tailor my messages to help you? And then what persecution are you going under? I, I, I try to look at everyone's uh, profile that follows me on Facebook. I try to look and say, okay, let's see, what is this person, where they live, and what could they be going through? And I find people from all over the world that are following on Facebook. Now, I don't know if you're reading every day, and that's up to you. But I do want to know, what persecution do you face? Because I live in the United States and we don't face persecution, just to be very plain about it. We, we don't face any persecution at all for being a believer. And so I want to ask you, what persecution do you face? How can I help you? And what message could I give that would be encouraging to you? What's the area that causes you to stumble? And then, for those of you that are in ministry, you have people that you minister to, check on them. On a very regular basis, how you doing? What can I do to help? Where is the place of need for you? And I think that's what God is saying through to Paul was doing, and it's what we need to do to live out this verse. So I ask you, what area causes you to stumble? Or are you facing persecution? If you're in in ministry of others to others, ask them the very same question and be of help to them. Want to read the whole devotional? Go to the link at the bottom of the page. We'll see you tomorrow.